Please note that Tablet Express provided me with this unit free of charge in order for me to produce an honest and unbiased review of the product. The Dragon Touch Y88X Plus is a 7-inch tablet that delivers surprising performance for the price. The model I received was the apricot white version of this tablet, although it also comes in blue, white, black, or pink. Included in the box is the tablet itself, some manuals, a USB cable, a wall charger, and a screen protector that's pre-installed. Let me start by saying that this is a $55 tablet. You certainly shouldn't be expecting the quality of an iPad Pro. That being said, in my opinion, the build quality is a little low for my preference. The tablet feels lighter than you would expect, which is a nice factor for portability, but it does give it a cheaper feel. The back is plastic and scratches very easily. If you want to keep this looking nice, I would recommend buying a case right away, and always keep the tablet in it. Also, the tablet does flex quite a bit. With only some light pressure, I can twist both sides and the screen lightens up significantly in the corners. I was too afraid to do a drop test, and I was worried the screen would get damaged very easily. The screen itself is certainly nothing fancy. It's a 7-inch screen with a native resolution of 1024 by 600 which, although it's claimed to be HD on the product page, it's lower than 720p resolution. At an arm's length away, the screen looks okay, but when you bring it closer, it's very easy to notice the individual pixels, which are not very dense. The brightness levels are a little low, with the glossy screen, this might be hard to see in harsh lighting. It comes with a screen protector, but I ended up removing it because it was scratching more easily than the screen from basic general use, and I could not stand the texture of it. I found after removing it, the screen looked much better, and was quite a bit more pleasant to use, although it does collect a lot of fingerprints. The best part about the screen would be the improved IPS panel on this. Colors are quite vibrant and bold and give this tablet a more premium feel. The tablet comes equipped with a quad-core A33 chip, the ARM Sun 8i, a Mali 400MP GPU, 512MB of RAM, and 8GB internal storage. In all honesty, the average smartphone has more power than this, but at the price point, it's hard to beat the speed of this tablet. My Geekbench test gave it a single core score of 299 and a multi-core score of 875. The photo quality is surprisingly not that bad. These are a few samples I took with both the front and the back camera, both of which are 2 megapixels, which is not quite HD, and the dynamic range of the camera is poor, but it still manages to take very impressive photos for a $55 tablet. I watched a YouTube video on this, and the screen did end up surprising me. It looked much better than I was thinking. Since the aspect ratio of the screen is not perfect 16x9, you'll have very small black bars on a widescreen video, although it's not very noticeable. Also, the speaker is in the back face, and it's not very loud. This, however, is to be expected on a $55 tablet. All right, so here's the actual hands-on part of the review. To turn on the tablet, you simply press on the button on top here, and it powers on to unlock. Go here, and you swipe toward the little unlock icon. Um, the screen is a little bit darker than a lot of screens I've worked with, although it is nice. They sent it with the screen protector, even though, if you look here, I pulled it up a little bit when I was trying to get the little plastic piece off the front. So do keep that in mind when you're opening it up. Be really careful. Um, and an arm's length away, the screen looks pretty good. You can't really notice any pixels, but as you bring it closer, you can definitely notice little squares inside of the screen. And it's not the nicest screen I've seen. It is running Android 4.4 KitKat. I did check, and there are no available updates. So let's get into the basic usability of this. Um, over here you swipe down from the top, there's all your notifications, and over here you have your settings, uh, like screen recording, which is actually a really cool feature, that I like, you can record your screen, uh, take a screenshot, um, there's different home screens on here, there's just a bunch of blank empty ones over here though, we do have a widget included on the home screen, already for some of your basic quick settings, uh, to access your apps, tap on that little icon down there, and you can then scroll through all of them. There's a page of apps, and then these are all widgets that you can move onto your home screen, tap and hold, and then you can move them to whatever screen you want. I just put another one of these down, but you get the idea. And uh, sound buttons are on the side here, although they also, when you're in horizontal mode, you can adjust it down here with these buttons, which is a really cool feature. I actually like that a lot, but when you're in vertical mode, um, you only have your three main buttons down there. Uh, the UI, it's nice. Um, there's different pages here. A little widget for some basic settings. You can move that around. Uh, to access all your apps, you tap on here, and you can scroll through them. This is everything installed on to there. Notifications, you simply swipe down. There's all your notifications. And then on this side are all your settings. 
Overall, although this tablet is most certainly not a premium device, it offers quality and performance that I have not seen matched at the price point. I would first recommend this tablet to adults who want an inexpensive tablet for their children, but also to the adults if they're in the market for a great budget tablet.